starting off this list at number 10. This story goes that a couple were at home just doing some household chores when something super strange happened to them. The husband went to open the front door to toss a dirty rug out of the house and it was completely pitch black outside. The weird part is that it was 2 p.m. and from inside the house it looked like a regular sunny afternoon with light coming in from the windows. They said that suddenly outside the front door where it was dark, it's like the sun was a light bulb and it went on, then off again, and then on. They described it like the flickering a light bulb does right before it's burnt out. The wife asked the husband if he had seen that and he replied, yes, what just happened? They also said that there weren't any clouds out either, so it couldn't have been a cloud blocking the sky. Were they transported to some alternate reality for a second? I honestly have no explanation for what the pair witnessed. Moving on to number nine. Before I dive into this one guys, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. This story comes from a Reddit user called RunnerGirl2001. RunnerGirl was trying to get over an ex when their friend Maggie texted asking if they would be open to going on a date with a mutual friend named Audrey. RunnerGirl accepted and tried to talk with Audrey but didn't really feel a strong connection and felt like maybe they just weren't meant to be. Shortly after this, more friends began texting Runner Girl about Audrey even though they didn't really want to keep seeing her. Later that day, Runner Girl ended up zoning out in light traffic and was close to getting in a car accident. They were halfway into the intersection when they realized that they had run a red light and at the moment they realized they saw a car swerve to not hit them. Runner Girl pulled over after this to process what just happened and after this specific moment, Runner Girl's friends never mentioned Audrey again. A few months later, Audrey began dating someone else in the friend group named Jake, so Runner Girl assumed that this was why they stopped bringing up Audrey. A few months later, Runner Girl ended up bringing up Audrey to Maggie and brings up how Maggie had tried to set them up. Maggie was super confused for saying, no, we were trying to set Audrey up with Jake. When Runner Girl went back to their text messages, they couldn't find any that mentioned Audrey at all. In the near miss car accident, did Runner Girl somehow end up jumping into another dimension? Moving on to number eight. One day a person, let's call them Taylor, was watching TV with their mom and brother while their sister and dad went out to run some errands. While they were watching TV, an ad for a show comes on the screen and it was one of those veterinary shows. Taylor's brother immediately recognized the vet on screen as his old track and field coach. The brother knew that he was a vet but didn't know that he was now on a TV show. Taylor had never met the coach before but obviously thought this story was cool. Later when Taylor's dad and sister returned home, Taylor went to tell their sister about the TV show Mishap. Taylor's sister had also never met this track coach and Taylor begins to tell the story and asks if she remembers the old coach who had a vet clinic. Taylor's sister replies, the funny one with the mustache? Taylor is confused since she's never met him so asks how she would know he had a funny mustache. Taylor's sister replies and says that Taylor told her about the coach earlier that morning. This of course totally freaked Taylor out because they didn't know what the coach looked like that morning and also they definitely do not remember having this conversation because why would anyone bring up their brother's old track coach without a reason? I'm not exactly sure what happened here but something weird is definitely going on. Moving on to number seven. This story comes from a person who often commutes to a town around three hours away from the one that they live in. One day they were doing the three hour drive with their mom and they got to this part that takes most of the drive and it's an area with a lot of mountains and cliffs. They are in the passenger seat with their mom driving and as they look out the side of the window over one of the cliffs, they see a small community that they had never seen before. This community looked nice and consisted of mostly bungalows which is apparently not normal for the area. Both them and their mom were super confused as to how they had never seen this community before but it gets even weirder. They never saw the community again. It just disappeared as quickly as it appeared. Did they accidentally drive into another dimension one day? Moving on to number six. So one day, this person was driving to work on the same route that they took every single day. They worked the whole day through and got into their car to head back home on that same path. As they were driving, they started feeling super, super anxious and like on the verge of a panic attack. They kept driving and then suddenly they see this huge power plant all lit up. They're super confused because they drive this road every single day. How could they possibly miss this glaringly obvious thing? Then their boyfriend called and asks them to pick up McDonald's on the way home. No problem, they go to the drive-thru. When they get to the window, they see an employee that they've never seen before, even though they're at the same McDonald's almost every single day because you've got to get those chicken 
nuggets, and this new employee is the only one there and says that they've been working there for around two months. They take the food and head home, and when they get there, they begin to tell the boyfriend about this strange power plant that they just saw. The boyfriend explains that the power plant has always been there, so he doesn't know what they're talking about. Now, every day they drive past this power plant with no idea how it got there or how they had missed it, but they've also noticed a few other small differences in their life. Their dog doesn't know tricks it used to know, and their boyfriend pronounces some words differently than before. Maybe on their drive home, they slipped into a new dimension. Moving on to number five. This story starts when a person received a camera as an early birthday gift, but there was no SD card in the camera. When they got home, they threw an older SD card into the camera and began to see old pictures and videos that they had totally forgotten about. As they were scrolling through the pictures, they realized that one was a video of their mom with one of their old dogs who had passed away. This was obviously such a treat to see this video that they forgot even existed and to be able to see their dog once again. They switched to another SD card to see if there were any more hidden gems that they had forgotten about, but unfortunately the other SD card didn't really contain much. When they switched back to the original SD card, they saw the thumbnail for the video with the dog, they selected it, but when it went to load, the screen just suddenly looked like it was cracked all over. They backed out of the thumbnail and then the entire video just completely disappeared, as well as the fact that now the brand new camera screen was just all messed up. While looking through SD cards, did the camera somehow transport them into an alternate reality where that video was taken? I don't know. This whole situation is super weird. Moving on to number four. This story comes from a person who works at a retirement home, so they have to get a weekly COVID test. The test takes place in a building farthest from the building that they actually work in, so they drove their car over to the test, parked their car on the lot, but left it running since the test was routine and super quick and easy. At the test, they saw a friend of theirs and offered them a ride back to the building that they worked in. The pair headed out to the lot and realized that their car was still running, but the doors were locked. They searched their pockets to make sure that they didn't have a key, but since the car was still running, this obviously wasn't possible and there was no spare key for the car, so they ended up calling a locksmith to come and help them out. The pair waited inside the testing building until the locksmith arrived. When he got there, they went out to the car and realized it wasn't running anymore. They thought maybe it had run out of gas or maybe the battery had died, but they felt like it hadn't been that long. The locksmith opened the car door and when they reached in for the keys, they realized that they weren't in the ignition. This shot them both because the car was definitely on earlier when they realized that they were locked out. They went to walk back into the testing center to look in there, and after taking a couple steps, they heard the keys jingle in their pocket. The same pockets that they had checked before. Where did these keys come from? Because they definitely weren't in there before, and now they have to pay a locksmith $200 for no reason. Coming in at number three, this one is another dog story and starts off with a woman who will call Anna, having her bi-weekly phone call call with her mom just to catch up and see what's going on. Anna's mom unfortunately had to inform her that Anna's sister's dog named Honey had passed away. Anna was obviously super upset at this loss and called her sister to check in after hearing the news. Anna had tons of questions about where they were planning to bury the dog as well as how her sister's son was doing with the loss. Anna told her boyfriend how upset she was about the loss of the dog as they had a really strong bond. Flash forward a couple months and Anna is heading home for Thanksgiving. Her sister was heading out of town to spend the holiday with her in-laws, so she left her pets at the parents' house so that they could be watched over. As Anna walks into her parents' home, she sees Honey, healthy as can be, just sitting in the living room. Anna was of course overjoyed, but asked her mom why she had told her that Honey died. Anna's mom was super confused and said that that conversation never happened. After leaving her parents' house, Anna asked her boyfriend about it, and he said he was super glad that she brought it up because he also remembered the conversation. Did they somehow enter a world where Honey was still alive? While this would be such an amazing surprise, it would also be unbelievably creepy. In our number two spot today, this story comes from a guy who loves cars but had a weird moment about 15 years ago that he just couldn't get off of his mind. When he was in his early 20s, he loved to speed in cars and just wanted to go fast. His friend had a car that he really wanted to drive and one day it just turned out to be his lucky day and his friend finally gave in. He hopped in the driver's seat with his friend who owned the car in the passenger seat and another buddy in the back and off they went. They went to an empty freeway around 3am 
and put the pedal to the metal. Once they hit around 135 miles per hour, they began to see a bunch of semi trucks. There were basically three driving side by side, taking up all three of the lanes and certainly not going as fast as our speed demon friend. He thought to himself that there was an on ramp coming up and he would just use that as some extra room to pass, but unfortunately, as he approached the on ramp, another semi was entering the freeway and occupying that fourth lane. With all four semis lined up, he was approaching too fast with no time to break, so he closed his eyes and prepared for the worst. But then, nothing happened. He opened his eyes and the other guys in the car were just as confused as he was. Somehow they were now in front of all of the semis, but there was literally no room for them to have passed by. This was the end of his speeding career as he was super spooked as to what possibly happened. Was this a real world glitch or did he somehow enter a reality where he wasn't in an extremely dangerous and potentially fatal situation? And coming in at number one. One day a guy gets a call from his neighbors asking him if he can help them move a mattress upstairs. They had a really great relationship with the neighbors, so he of course was willing to help. When he got there, they got the mattress all moved, and then the neighbors asked if he wouldn't mind helping with an armor as well. No problem, he thought, as he began to help them move that one up the stairs as well. This is when things went awry. There were 11 stairs at the front, he was on the lower end carrying the armor about 6 steps up, and his friend at the top lost a handle, and the whole thing came crashing down on him since he was at the bottom. He of course loses his balance and falls backwards towards the pavement. And this man actually remembers dying from this fall. The next thing he remembers though is waking up in his dining room with his phone ringing and his wife asking him if he's going to answer the phone. He's obviously super freaked out because he literally just died two seconds ago, but now he's here. When he answers the phone, it's his neighbor asking if he can help move a mattress up the stairs. He surprisingly goes over again to help, and when he gets there, he says that he can help with the mattress, but not with the armor. His neighbor is shocked because he doesn't know how he would have possibly known about this. Did this guy have some sort of premonition or did his death in one reality bring him into a different reality? Who knows, but I really hope he is taking advantage of his second chance at life. Starting off this countdown, we have the Parallel Wedding. This story was posted on Reddit by the user Parallel Alt Girl who went to a wedding in a parallel universe. So back in the day, she attended her aunt's wedding. The wedding was big and the theme of the wedding was dark blue. So all the bridesmaids were wearing blue dresses, and so was she. After the wedding, she took a little nap before the reception. But when she woke up, she was no longer in a blue dress. She was in a light orange one. So was everyone else. She didn't know how that was even possible. But even looking back at the wedding photos, she was photographed attending the wedding in an orange dress, along with all the other bridesmaids. So now she believes that she somehow woke up in another universe, one where everyone wore orange instead of blue to the wedding. In our ninth spot, we have the swapped selves. This story was posted on Reddit by the user someone else 777 She believes that she swapped places with her parallel universe self. So story goes that she was out for a hike one day with her boyfriend. They were nearing the end of the hike when her boyfriend decided to climb a big rock formation. But she was too tired, so she continued to walk down the path to meet him at the other end. However, while walking, she got a bad feeling, thinking that something bad happened to her boyfriend. Then all all of a sudden she was someone else. She went from thinking, what if my boyfriend gets hurt? I should rescue him. To, I came here alone, who am I rescuing? So in one universe, she was out hiking with her boyfriend. In the other, she was out hiking alone. When she switched places, she noticed that her other self was a bit different. She was a bit taller, fitter, and felt more confident. She was also carrying a tent and supplies for a solo journey. Her boyfriend was not with her. Like what? That would freak me out, just all of a sudden like, and you're someone else? Mm. But like, yourself, but then someone else? I don't know. Coming in at number 8, we have The Castle. Posted on Reddit by the user John30859, he shared his experience visiting a parallel universe. But this one was actually quite magical. So story goes that John and his cousin were outside on the porch when two teenagers approached them and asked them if they wanted to see a castle. I mean, that has stranger danger written all over it. But the two boys were young and naive, so they followed them along a path in the woods. A little while later, they saw a huge, beautiful castle in the distance. They got so excited that they ran home to show their parents. But when they arrived home, his mom got mad and told them to stay inside for the rest of the night. 
Here's the thing, he claims that his mom is very strict. She is always checking in on them when they are playing outside. So she would have noticed if they left. On top of that, in the area he lives in, there are no castles or churches or anything else that could have been mistaken for a castle. But the boys both vividly remember seeing the castle, even now at 25 years old. So what happened? Well, other people replied to his post offering him two explanations. One is that they were taken to fairy. Basically, a parallel dimension that can only be reached by doors and hills, under lakes and wells, through hedges, etc. The next is that the teenagers were actually aliens in disguise that brought them into another dimension. Either way, they somehow got transported into a world that has a giant castle. Moving on at number seven, we have the third floor. This next story was posted on Reddit by the user FeiFei775. Back in 2015, he went to the hospital to visit his dad, who was a patient there. There. After spending some time with him, he left with his friend to go get some snacks. So they hopped on the elevator and went to the third floor where all the food was. But when the doors opened, they found that the whole area was completely deserted. The lights were flickering and the floor was trashed. Scared, they headed on back to the fifth floor where his dad's room was. Fast forward to a week later, they are back at the hospital. And turns out that his dad was, and had always been, on the third floor, which was now cleaned up and in use. So he is convinced that he somehow took an elevator to a different universe. Coming in at number six, we have jumping universes. So this story was posted on Reddit a month ago, but the user that posted the story deleted their account. I wonder why. Maybe they ended up in a different universe. All right, so this individual wrote that every time they wake up from a sleep, they believe that they are in a different universe. The differences in each universe are small, but still you know that something is not quite right. Some people will act differently from day to day, or a location of objects will move ever so slightly. So they believe that every day they end up in a different universe. And a lot of people commented on this post claiming that they too have had similar experiences, where they fall asleep and then wake up and they're in a different universe. My only question is, how many universes are out there? We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the accident. Posted by the user UM Awake, they shared a story about the time that they were involved in an accident in one universe, but not the other. So when she was younger, she was outside watching her uncle do wheelies on his four wheeler. Eventually, she hopped on to have some fun, but sadly, the four wheeler flipped. All she remembers is it getting very quiet and then waking up on the couch inside the house. She went outside to find her family helping helping her cousin and uncle get out from under the four wheeler. But she vividly remembers being the one on the vehicle that flipped. Coming in at number four, we have the breakfast place. Posted on Reddit by the user Texas KSMO, she shares a story about the time her and her husband visited a restaurant in a parallel universe. So to begin, the couple bought a little country house which they go to on the weekends. One weekend while traveling there, they decided to stop and have breakfast at a restaurant they had never seen before. They entered and a man in a cowboy hat said, you can just sit yourself. I feel like that's what he sounded like if he had a cowboy hat on. So They ended up having a nice meal and wanted to return a couple weeks later. However, when they went back to try and find the same restaurant, it was gone. Instead, in place of the restaurant was an old boarded up abandoned building. The building looked the same, but was completely deserted. Dun, dun, dun. I wonder how food tastes though in another universe. Maybe it's better, maybe it's worse. Maybe they have new food that we don't have in this universe. Who knows? In our third spot, we have the work day. This story was posted four years ago on Reddit, but sadly the account is now deleted, so I can't give them credit. So according to this post, it was September 11th, 2015, and the guy was headed to his job of five years. But when he got there, he said that something fell off. In fact, he saw employees that he had never even seen before. He ended up striking a conversation with one of them and mentioned how it was September 11th and how it was sad what happened on that day. But the employee had no clue what he was talking about. The guy explained it, 
but the employee was all like, what a tax? That never happened. Then on his way home, he was listening to the radio and it mentioned Howard Dean as president. Obviously, this freaked the guy out, so as soon as he got home, he decided to just lay down and relax. He ended up falling asleep, and when he woke up, he was back in his normal universe. Honestly, I think it would be super scary to get trapped in a universe that isn't yours. Like, you'd be telling stories and people would be like, what are you talking about, you little crazy person? Like, no one would believe you. You'd be by yourself. Sad. Coming in at number two, we have the assignment. Three Acid Nirvana on Reddit shared his experience about traveling to another universe, where something freaky happened to him at school. So in one of his courses, his teacher gave the class a massive research assignment. For the assignment, they had to use resources from a list the teacher supplied them with. So he ended up using this one book in the library to help him write the paper. About a week before the paper was due, he needed to go cite something from the book, but he already returned it to the library. So he went to the library and asked to get the book. Not only did the library not carry the book, but there was no such book ever written. Which is freaky, because how could he write a whole paper on a topic that he didn't know without any sources? So he must have traveled to a different universe, one where that book doesn't exist. And in our number one spot, we have Denny's. Ever wonder what food is like in an alternate universe? Well, they still got Denny's, I can tell you that. But it goes by another name there, Pennies. Yep. Reddit user is underscore emo posted a story about the time he ended up going to a place called Pennies, which was identical to Denny's. From the building to the food and the menu, everything was the same. Except it was called Pennies. He even asked his parents about it since he had been to that restaurant in that same location multiple times, but they said it has always been called Pennies. A couple weeks later when passing by the restaurant, he noticed the sign turned back to Denny's. He asked his parents again and they said they have never even heard about Pennies. What's going on? Like that would drive me insane. Does this happen to other restaurants too in other dimensions? Like is Chick-fil-A called Flick Chile? thought-provoking question. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the story of Carol Chase McCallany. One day in 2006, Carol was driving through San Bernardino, California on her way to Paris, California, where she was going to stay for a few days. On her travels, she saw a sign for Riverside, which was nearby, and she decided that since her family had roots there, maybe it was time to stop in for a visit. As she went into Riverside, she realized that everything looked different from how she remembered it, and was unable to find her old house that she grew up in. She tried to go to the street that her grandmother used to live on, but that one was different too. And when she tried to visit her grandparents' graves at the cemetery, the whole place didn't even exist. Even the people who were living in the town gave Carol a bad feeling, and she didn't even want to get out of her car. She decided she would just be better off continuing on her trip and left Riverside. Carol didn't end up returning to Riverside until a few years later, after her dad had passed and she was attending the funeral. To Carol's surprise, when she went to Riverside this time, time, everything was as she remembered it from her childhood. Carol believes that day that she ended up in some sort of parallel universe form of Riverside, and she even said that she felt like if she left her car that day, she was going to get stuck there. In our number 9 spot, we have this story from Peru. The Marcoasi forest in Peru has been called a doorway to another dimension for centuries because of all the stone figures that resemble human faces and religious figures, and because of the amount of people who go missing and never get found. There was a group of friends who decided to enter the forest despite all of these stories, and they ended up stumbling upon a cabin that appeared to have some sort of party going on inside. As the group went up to the cabin, they saw people inside, but all of the people were in 17th century garb, and nothing that was modern or similar to what the group of friends was wearing. One of the friends began to try and enter the cabin, and was halfway in the door when the friends quickly pulled her back. After being pulled out, it was discovered that the half of her body that had entered the cabin was now paralyzed. If her body really did become paralyzed because it had entered another dimension, that would definitely explain all of those strange stone statues. In our number 8 spot, we have the old story of the green children of Woolpit. 
In the 12th century, it is said that two children were discovered just outside of Woolpit, Great Britain, but what was so weird about them is that they had green skin. When the children were brought back into the city and given food and water, they refused to eat anything other than raw beans. Eventually, their green skin began to fade and turned into a more normal human color. One of the children passed away, but the girl continued to grow and eventually learned English. When she was finally able to communicate with those around her, she told the story of how her and her brother had come from a place that was in constant darkness called St. Martin's Land. Everyone from her town lived underground and everyone had the same green skin. The girl and her brother were wandering around one day when they came across a cave and they decided to enter. They kept walking and eventually came to Woolpit and when they turned around, the cave they had been in disappeared. Did this cave act as a portal to an alternate reality for these kids? If so, I don't ever want to end up where they come from because it does not sound nice. Guys, before I continue on in this list, make sure you hit that like button because it really helps us out. In our number seven spot today, we have the story of James Richards. In 2009, James was walking his dog when he tripped and knocked his head, rendering him unconscious. When he woke up, he found himself beside some sort of machine he didn't recognize, and there was another man named Jonas who said he had just found James' body while he was on a work trip for the interdimensional travel company that he worked for. What? The two ended up striking up some sort of conversation, I guess like you would when someone just casually tells you that they travel through dimensions for work. They started chatting about what pop culture was like in each of their dimensions, and they came to discover that, of course, the Beatles existed in both of their dimensions. Jonas ended up explaining that in his dimension, the Beatles were all still alive and they had never actually broken up. Jonas gave James a cassette tape of the Beatles music from his dimension that certainly does not exist in ours. When James returned to our universe, he ended up uploading the tape to a website called thebeatlesneverbrokeup.com. In our number six spot, we have a story from Reddit that was posted by the user Two Hum Folk. One day, the writer was driving home from school and began trying to call their boyfriend using the hands-free feature. The phone didn't end up ringing even after five separate attempts, so they turned the phone off and then on again and tried one more time. This time, the boyfriend answered, but it didn't really sound like the person they knew and loved, and they also sounded like they were pretty freaked out. He said, Liz, is this you? Liz kept saying hello, but wasn't getting an answer, and panicked and hung up the phone. Liz tried calling again twice, but there was no ring again. Luckily, on the third try, another voice picked up the phone and asked, Is this better? Liz then asked who this was, and the voice responded with something unintelligible, and then they hung up. Liz continued to call the boyfriend until he picked up the phone. Sounding significantly more like himself and not panicked at all, Liz asked who was picking up the phone earlier, and the boyfriend explained that no one had picked up the phone because he had never received any other calls. When Liz got home and checked the boyfriend's call log, they realized that only one call had gone through to his phone. Liz made sure that they were dialing the right number when they were calling, and it was the correct number every single time. Who had been answering the boyfriend's phone? At our number five spot and halfway mark, we have another Reddit post from Tiger King Quinton. The user explains that this story takes place when they were eight years old in Florida with their family and their friend's family for a two week vacation. The friend really wanted to go to Wet n Wild and begged for his parents to take them there, so they ended up going one day during the trip. The boy and his dad ended up going into the wave pool that day and were mainly staying in the shallow area. After a while, a larger wave comes their way and it takes the boy underneath the water. He realizes he can't feel the bottom anymore and begins to panic trying to break the surface of the water. When he reaches the top and gets his head out of the water, he realizes that he is no longer at wet and wild, but is in the middle of an ocean a couple hundred meters from an island. He doesn't know where or what this island is, but after a few seconds he begins to feel lightheaded and sinks back into the water. Luckily he then feels some hands under his arms and he realizes his dad is lifting him out of the water back at wet and wild, asking him if he's alright. Maybe this wave pool really did take this kid to an alternate dimension. In our number 4 spot we have a story coming from Tokyo in 1954. 
At the Haneda airport, a plane from Europe landed and dropped off its passengers. As the passengers made their way through customs, one man told the officials that he was just on a normal business trip that he made regularly. He spoke French as his first language, but could also speak Japanese and a few other languages. Officials then asked him where he was from, and his response is where things take a turn. He said he was from a place called Torrid, which was on the border between France and Spain. When officials told him that the place didn't exist, he gave them a passport that had been issued by this country that isn't real. This passport had also been stamped, validating all of the previous trips he had said he went on, including his previous trips to Japan. Officials called the company that he said he was meeting with, and the company said that they had never heard of him or his company before. They then called the hotel he said he had a reservation at, and the bank that was listed on his checkbook. The hotel said that there was no reservation for him, and the bank just didn't exist at all. Officials thought that maybe he was confused, so they showed him a map and pointed to the country of Andorra, asking him if this is what he meant. The man began to get upset, saying that Andorra didn't exist and that it had misplaced Torrid, where he claimed to be from. Customs decided to detain the man and put him in a hotel room for the night while they decided what to do next. The next day when they went to collect the man, he had totally disappeared with all of his personal identification and documents. Police searched for this missing man, but he was never found. Maybe this man somehow accidentally found himself in a parallel universe separate from his own, and I just hope he was able able to make it back to wherever he was from and return to his normal life. In our number 3 spot we have the story of a man named Jafar Vorin. Jafar was a strange man who just appeared in a village one day before he was picked up by authorities. The language he spoke was closest to German, but even then it wasn't quite the same. Jafar said he was from a place called Sakria and that he was searching for his brother who had been lost in a shipwreck. He couldn't point out where he was from, but was able to tell authorities some geographical information about where he had come from. He explained that his home had five separate compartments or continents called Sakria, Aflar, Aslar, and Uplar. He couldn't show anyone how he had arrived at the village, and he had no idea how to get home, so he just ended up living out the rest of his life in Berlin. It's crazy to think that maybe he was a man from another dimension, and he ended up just getting stuck here. I feel bad for him, and I wish we could have helped him return home. In our number two spot, we have the story of Pedro Ramirez. Pedro was driving from a place called Seville to his home in Alcala de Guadera on a November night in 1986. As he went around a curve in the road, he suddenly found himself on a six lane highway and as he continued to drive straight, he saw tall buildings, unidentified structures and grass that was two feet tall growing alongside the road. These were all things that were out of the ordinary for that area. He continued driving and suddenly Pedro heard a voice that told him he had been transferred to another country in a different hemisphere. Pedro didn't know what to do so he kept driving for another hour before stopping on the side of the road to take a look around. After a short break he began driving again only to come across a sign with three arrows pointing in different directions. One was labeled Malaga, the other was Sevilla, and the last was Alcabala. Pedro decided to take the Sevilla route and after driving down it for a while, he stopped again. When he pulled over and got out of the car, he stood there for a second, and then when he looked back to his left, he saw he was standing right outside of his home. He tried to go back to where he had been before, but couldn't find anything that he had seen before, including the sign with the three arrows. Who knows where Pedro was for that while, but I'm very glad that he ended up making it home safely. In our number one spot today, we have the story of Lorena Garcia. One morning in 2008, Lorena woke up in a life that was similar to the one she was living when she went to sleep, but certainly not the same. At first it was just small things like her bed sheets and her pajamas, but when she got to work, things began to escalate. Lorena realized that her office wasn't her office and that she worked in the same building, but in a completely different department. She had never even met her boss before, so she knew that this couldn't have been a moment where she just got lost or confused. When she returned home after work that day, she was met by her ex-boyfriend, only to find out that he was apparently her current boyfriend. She tried to find the 
person that she had been dating for months, but he didn't seem to exist in this new life and world that she found herself in. Lorena began to seek psychiatric help because she was fearing that she was having some sort of nervous breakdown, but all tests reveal that she seemed to be of sound body and mind. The strange occurrences continued when Lorena asked her family how her sister was doing. Lorena knew that her sister had recently had shoulder surgery and wanted to check in, but when she asked her family, they were baffled by her claims and insisted that there was no surgery that had taken place on anyone in the family. Lorena couldn't find any answers to her situation and was having no luck with a medical explanation either. She is convinced that she went to sleep one night and woke up in a parallel universe that was altered slightly by small decisions that she had made. Honestly, after all of these stories, I kind of believe Lorena too. Starting off at number 10 is nacreous clouds. This picture is taken in Jamtland, Sweden. You can see the nacreous clouds and I know what you're thinking, these are fake. I mean, it looks like 60s psychedelic art transposed onto the sky. Some sort of oil spill on the clouds. It kind of looks like what you see when you rub your eyes too much. Like, it's all that trippiness. But really, no, these are clouds. They form up high in the atmosphere, about 30 kilometers up, so way higher than a bunch of other clouds. And they are also known as ice polar stratospheric clouds. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of science behind them, so just know that they're a real thing. But yeah, really, they do look like something you think you would see if you woke up one day in a parallel universe and it's just the one thing that's off. You're like, no, I'm just going about my day. It's chill, it's chill. And then you look up and you're like, whoa, dude, it's a lot, you know? Yeah. On to number nine, a blue McDonald's fries container. So yeah, sure, in this universe, McDonald's red and yellow, those are its brand colors. And that's probably because there's been research that says the color red can stimulate appetite. I believe it, you know? And then also they have yellow because yellow is just really cute. I know it's gold for golden arches, but it's, it's really yellow, let's be real. But these colors might not be the same in other universes. Like, take this fries container, blue and yellow. It's just different, I feel calm, I still kinda want McDonald's fries, not gonna lie, cause I, I always do, I don't know. But it turns out this picture was most likely taken in Israel because people caught that there's some Hebrew writing on the ketchup packets and on tray paper, so yes it is in this universe, but just imagine there's a McDonald's out there that went blue and yellow instead. Just blue and yellow. Moving on to number eight, a spotted zebra. So zebras have stripes, right? I'm not remembering incorrectly. Yeah, I'm right, they have stripes. But apparently not all zebras. A zebra foal debuted with a dark coat and white polka dots. Over in Kenya's Maasai Mara National Reserve, a foal debuted. He has been named Tira. In addition to being absolutely adorable, he is unique. So maybe a baby zebra from another universe where they have spots got confused and wandered over to this universe. And then a striped baby zebra from this one wandered over there to the polka dot world. It kind of sounds like a children's book to me, so write it and then send it my way. Thank you. But sadly, this zebra may not have such a happy ending. Without the signature stripes, Tira may get more bug bites, be easier prey to hunt, and all that, unfortunately. Predators can find it hard to target an individual in a group of zebras since they're like chasing a bunch of lines. But a polka dot zebra could be easier because it sticks out, but it looks cute, <laughs> at least. Okay, moving on. Number seven, Bougie 7-Eleven. Over in Chicago, one 7-Eleven is straying from the normal green, red, and orange. It's going gold. Like, look at this. Not only are all the letters all crisp and shiny, but the whole storefront is golden. The doors, the metal structure, everything. In an alternate universe, I need to know, is 7-Eleven like nice? Here, it's a corner store or gas station level, kind of like grab and go, just all that. The coffee tastes as cheap as it is. The overpriced chips that I will still buy are there. And of course it has Slurpees. It's like a slushy, but it's a Slurpee. And that's what we have here. But in an alternate universe, 7-Eleven, are there finer foods, like finger foods? Is there a to-go section that's like a buffet? Are there oysters? Is it the roaring 20s there? Like, is it like glitz and glam? Is there gold all around? Is 7-Eleven different? Is it different where you are? I don't know. Number six, green Elmo. So while hiking in Georgia, a Reddit user stumbled upon an old Elmo covered in moss. So the result is an Elmo that looks entirely green. An Elmo of nature, if you will. It kind of gives new meaning to Elmo's world. Like no longer does Elmo's world mean, you know, the world he is living in. No, now Elmo's world means Elmo is the world. Either in the fact that he's literally a part of it, becoming it, moss encapsulating him, or the other way. There's an alternate universe where he is the planet, and it's inhabited by elbows. Cause I could see that. <laughs> Cause I would watch that if it was a show, let's be real. Anyways, it really looks like this Elmo has seen some things. Like look at the eyes. So maybe this alternate universe Elmo is more Five Nights at Freddy's than Sesame Street. Cause it's, 
Looks kind of creeped out if you ask me. On to another one of different colors, number five, an albino moose. Or albino meese. Moose. Mooses? Let's think about it. So I have covered crawlers and cryptids before, and when you take a peek at this albino moose, just think about what it would look like at night when you can barely see. Just think about it. Okay, moving on. What these moose were spotted doing was crossing a road in northern Ontario. So albinism, which these moose have, is something that this universe, most species can get. Melanin isn't produced and the skin and hair go white. And that's what's happening here. But do you think maybe there's an alternate universe where albinism is dominant? As in most everything is albino and rarity is colorful. Maybe there is a different world out there where two colorful brown moose are crossing the street and someone else is very confused about all this color because everyone there is albino. I don't know, maybe. Could be. But let's move on to number four, a blonde sea lion. So no, this isn't a trampura shrimp. It is not a jumbo prawn. This is a black sea lion that evidently isn't black. His buddy is sitting there behind him like a hype man with just a little wink at the camera saying, yeah, look at my butt here. Cool fur, right? And then the blonde friend in the front is just like hitting a pose, waiting for the photo to be taken. The sea lion just knows they're special. They're flaunting it, they have a smize, they're waiting for a snack. They're just like, hello. They look like they're from a sunshine universe or the Lorax, one of the two. Either way, I feel like someone should Photoshop it as if it's on a plate of shrimp and then have a contest to see if people could spot the difference. Cause I couldn't. <laughs> Adorable. But this is another lighter animal at number three, an orange gator. So spotted in South Carolina, this orange gator might give Chester the cheetah a run for his money. He looks like he might be covered in Cheeto dust, or it might be dried clay, who knows. So this gator is laying there with its little gator smile, thinking it's camouflaged or something, but it's bright orange. Yet another animal from the bright and shiny alternate universe. Just like, are all reptiles warm toned in that alternate universe? Are they warm blooded? What is the story behind this gator? Is it too much self-tanner? Is it residual rust from a pipe it had a nap in? I don't know. But local news doesn't really know either for sure. So the last one seems to be closest from what I've read. There were two gators a week after this one appeared and they may have hibernated in an old pipe. No need to worry about the rust and what the hibernating in a pipe could do for their skin and all of their scales. They will shed off that entire layer and all that rust when they shed off their skin. So no worries. The gators are safe, because that's what we worry about with gators, their safety. On to number two, no aces. So playing cards, they don't have ones, they have aces. It can be ace high or ace low, just no matter your preference, it's an ace, not a one. But these cards don't play by those rules apparently and are insufferable to look at. They have ones instead of aces. Like you can't play poker with those. No Texas Hold'em, Euchre, Hearts, none of, none of it. You could try and pretend they are aces, but we all know what is right and that is not the same, okay? What twisted parallel universe decided it was okay to come into our universe and plant the seeds of something that would tear down the playing card industry? No, I won't allow it. I want aces. I'm saying. And yes, ace used to represent the side of the die with only one pip. It used to mean bad luck in Middle English. But culture has evolved, so it now represents high quality. So I will not stand for this regression of our culture, okay? Okay, moving on from aces. I swear. At number one, we have a woe sign. So you may have heard of a stop sign or seen one. I mean, I assume you have. If you have a computer or phone to watch this on, you've most likely been in a car. Right, yeah. Anyways, what if a stop sign said something different? Introducing the woe sign. This sign is saying, oh, whoa there, bud, you gotta stop right there. Just slow your roll. Roll to a stop, please. Whoa, buddy. Oh, whoa. And yes, woe is also the command for an animal to stand still or just anyone to stand still, so it does make sense. But the fact it is used as a replacement for stop still seems funny. I feel infrastructure is always quite serious and formal, so to see something like woe on a sign just Seems kind of fun to me, I don't know. It catches you off guard, just a bit. So maybe in another universe that's the norm. Uh, all like, hit the woe, then you may go. Gotta skeet skeet before you've roomed down the street. Gotta slow down before you ride around town. Hello and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet, Certified. I am your host Rebecca Felgate and today we're talking about the top 10 scary parallel universe theories. Now a lot of people believe that there are parallel universes out there and actually we're just living in one of many. Some, actually all of these theories are pretty mind melty so you may want to arrange a nap afterwards. Before I get into this video I want to ask you guys if you believe in a parallel universe. Do you think we're living in the matrix? Let me know. If you do believe in parallel 
universes do you think we can ever travel to another? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Also do be sure to leave a thumbs up on this video and share it with a friend and check out the links to our most amazing Instagrams in the description box. Stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be reading out some comments. Alright coming in at number 10 we have the simulation hypothesis slash the matrix theory. It seems that our mate Elon Musk believes that we could be living in a simulated universe. Of course he does. He said that there is a billion to one chance that we are living in a base reality. A billion to one. Really? Now the theory seems to suggest that actually we're living in a computer simulation just like in the matrix. Word on the street at the New Yorker is that actually right now there are two tech billionaires secretly engaging scientists to work on breaking us out of the simulation as we speak. So who is running this simulation? Apparently it is a post human civilization. The long and short of the majority of the theories is that computers have already taken over and they're keeping us living in a simulation out of the way. Why isn't it a perfect utopia? Well that just wouldn't be believable would it? Or would it? I don't know where's the evidence here? Well amongst other slightly crazy suggestions some say that the universe is a simulation because it seems to behave mathematically and is broken up into pieces subatomic particles like a pixelated video game. I don't know I'm not I'm not so sure. Coming in at number 9 I do believe in this we have deja vu. What is deja vu? Is it a glitch in the matrix like Morpheus claimed or is it a lived moment from our parallel lives or is it some other kind of a brain phenomena that we just don't know too much about yet. According to Dr. Michu Kaku, an American futurist, deja vu occurs as a result of a person's ability to flip between universes. Others believe it's because we're vibrating in unison with the frequency of another universe that's parallel with our own. Mind melt. I actually really enjoy Dr. Kaku's Twitter. He posts thought provoking science riddles, plus his profile picture is golden. Coming in at number 8 we have the Large Hadron Collider is a time machine. Like is it? The Large Hadron Hadron Collider is a 17 mile long super machine that smashes particles together at nearing light speed. Now the machine is based in Switzerland and there has been a lot of suspicion and speculation about it. Some people think it is possible for the machine to create microscopic black holes, others say it makes time travel possible. There is an absolutely wild theory out there that an experiment at the Large Hadron Collider caused an Iber World Airbus A330300 to land 5,500 miles away from its intended location and it caused a power outage across South America. An article on the website Freedom Fighter Times claimed the power released from the LHC was so strong that it sent a time warp across the planet. Honestly I'm not sure if I'm here for that also lol at the title of their publication but others do suggest that the LHC can create conditions that allow matter and radiation to travel backwards and forwards in time. A lot of credible science articles have written of the possibility of creating a wormhole. Now, this this invites all kinds of drama via the grandfather paradox. If you travel back in time and kill your grandfather, does that mean that in the future you don't exist? Or does it create a parallel universe of alternative outcomes? Coming into number 7 we have what is at the end of a black hole. Recently we got our first ever picture of a black hole. Our knowledge on black holes is still a little sketchy. We only have what we have observed and what we have observed has been pretty damn far away. We know that black holes are very dense and that they exhibit such strong gravitational pulls on all things that nothing can escape their draws, not even the fastest moving particles we know, light. What happens to the particles once they're drawn inside the black hole? Well we don't actually know. One theory is that the black hole is a portal to a different part of space, it's a parallel universe if you will. Now towards the end of his life the late great Stephen Hawking was actually working on a theory of multiverses that included black holes. He alluded to the possibility of a black hole spilling its matter out into a separate place in space time, a new universe maybe. He said the hole would need to be large and if it was rotating it might be a passage to another universe. He did say though if we travelled through we probably couldn't come back to our own so I'm not sure if I'd want to go. Ooh, coming into number 6 we have every outcome slash the cat theory. So let me tell you about Schrodinger's cat. This is a thought experiment and paradox that could imply multiple outcomes. So the experiment is thus. If you place a cat and something that could kill the cat in a box and you seal it, you would not know if the cat was alive or dead until you open the box. So until the box is opened, the cat in a sense is both alive and dead. Are you with me? You might not be when I say the next sentence but let's just say it anyway. So electrons, little subatomic particles found in all atoms can spin both 
both forwards and backwards, but they can't spin in each direction at the same time. They choose an outcome. So the cat could both be alive and dead, or Actually, maybe it's both. According to the parallel universe theories of Everett and Davis, the act of observation makes a universe diverge, and both universes can exist. There's one where the cat's alive, and one where the cat's dead. They both come into existence. Every decision or situation could create a different outcome. It creates a diversion in the current universe, making for more parallel universes. Universe I? Does it make sense? I guess the mind kind of boggles, but let me give you an example. There could be a universe out there where I didn't move to Canada, and obviously the world that I'm living in where I did. Obviously, for me, the difference in those two outcomes would have been very, very different, but then perhaps there's a world in which I decided to wear pink today and not yellow, which would still be different, but maybe less dramatically so. Or so I think. Who knows? Coming into number five, we have the interaction. Michael Hall authored a paper on quantum theory, which includes the concept of every outcome. The cat both exists and doesn't exist, we just talked about this. Hall and a team from the Griffith University in Australia not only believe in the multiverse, but they believe that it interacts with our reality. They believe that infinite multiple worlds overlap and occupy the same region of space and time simultaneously. They think that the other worlds have subtle influences on our own. For example, strange occurrences, miracles, according to the interaction theory, are as a result of the parallel universes. Have you ever looked in the mirror and thought that actually your reflection didn't quite match up? Is it the multiverse? Coming in at number four, we have the Mandela effect. This is classic parallel universe theory, and honestly, this one does freak me out the most because I guess we've all had one of those moments of thinking, damn, I swear that that wasn't the way I remembered it. So let me explain. The Mandela effect is the name given to multiple shared but factually wrong memories. There are a bunch of people out there that remember freedom fighter and former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, dying in prison in the 1980s, except he didn't. He died in 2013. Similarly, some people staunchly swear that the Bernstein bears were spelt with an E and not an A, and honestly, I thought that the Looney Tunes were the Looney Tunes until I watched a video about the Mandela Effect last year, and I was really, really, really confused because tunes doesn't even make any sense, does it? They're cartoons. Why? Other people also swear that Sex in the City was Sex in the City, but it wasn't, unless you were living in the universe that it was. So yeah, the theory goes that you were right. You're just from a parallel universe where those subtle differences were in effect. I suppose this could also feed into the interaction theory. Coming into number three, we have the bruises and cold spots of the universe. Stephen Feeney of University College in London announced that he had discovered patterns of radiation background left over from the Big Bang that seemed to suggest that our universe bumped into none other than four other universes at some point in its lifespan and is left bruised. Four. Bruised. Ah. Similarly, astronomers have found so called cold areas of the universe. Now, these CMB cold spots are areas of the observable universe that we have interpreted in microwaves. Now, they seem to be unusually, well, cold. Many people call one particular area the Great Void. Now it seems that this area of space time contains 10,000 less galaxies than other areas of a similar size in space that have been studied. A lot of people, including scientists from the University of Durham, believe this to be evidence of a parallel universe that is smashed into ours, or are they overlapping? Is this, once again, the great interaction that we talked about? Coming in at number two, we have dreams and the unconscious. Some people think that dreams and the time spent unconscious allows us to access a parallel universe. This is why we dream in 3D. Again, this is why dreams sometimes don't always make sense, because not every universe may have the same laws of physics that we do. This is why we often dream of people that are no longer in our lives that we haven't seen for years, because perhaps in a parallel universe, they're still around you. Or so the theory goes. Now this theory seems to be held as a belief by some First Nations tribes, and I don't know, maybe there is something to it. Building on from this, at number one we have coma stories. So this actually does get pretty crazy. Sleep is one thing, but extended periods of sleep or unconsciousness allow for people to access the parallel universe for a longer period of time. Maybe. There was a really, really sad story posted on Reddit by Tempt to Sassoon seven years ago. Now they were involved in an accident and they were unconscious for a while, but during that period of unconsciousness, they lived ten years of a different life. Now in the story they say that he met a woman, he loved the woman, they ended up getting married, they had two kids, and they were happy. They were living a 
almost perfect life. But one day, he noticed that something was wrong with the lamp in his living room. It was kind of melting and contorting in some way. It was after three days of staring at the lamp and many worried conversations with his wife that actually he came to the realization that the lamp wasn't real. It started to invert and take up his entire perspective until all he was aware of was red hot pain. Now he awoke from his period of unconsciousness and discovered that the 10 years that he'd spent with his wife and children simply weren't real. He dreamed it all up somehow. He said he spent the next three years of his life in a state of severe depression, grieving the loss of a wife and child that actually just weren't real. He thought he was going insane. He said, I've had many personal messages describing similar experiences and three posters stating such experiences are impossible. I'd say that there needs to be more research done into brain function. Pre-med students don't assume you know everything. Honestly, I don't know what it was about that story, but it really got to me. It was kind of horrifying and creepy. But the young man, did he simply awake in a parallel universe? This is just one story of many. I've read a lot of coma stories like this where people think that they've lived other lives. I don't know. Has anyone seen the TV show The OA? For example, they talk about that a lot. Is it a sign of a parallel universe? Honestly, I feel a bit creeped out. To start off this list, we have bright spots. This is something that Dr. Ragnar Ram Cherry says is evidence of other universes. To explain this, I got a kick back in time way back before the Earth existed, but Kanye was already making fire music. A theory about the birth of the universe and the possible multiverse is that they all came from the same source, an infinite flat space where the multiverse was born. It's a possibility that all the these universes were born at the same time and due to a never ending amount of variables, they all evolved in different directions. We can see the evidence of the birth of the universe through cosmic microwave energy that is picked up through the universe. Certain areas of these cosmic microwave signals burn brighter than the rest. These are called bright spots. Now going back to Dr. Ragnar Ram Cherry, he believes that these bright spots are from different atomic makeups of other universes leaving their mark on ours. So at the birth of the multiverse, each universe left a little piece in each other one. Think of it as sharing a womb with an infinite amount of twins and then when you all got fired out of your mama, you all bumped into each other leaving birthmarks on each other. I bet there's a physicist out there who's like, that is the dumbest explanation of the universe I have ever heard. Coming in at number 9 is the Philadelphia Experiment. Now this was an alleged military experiment that the US Navy did back in October of 1943. Now the point of the experiment was to try and create some type of technology that could make ships invisible to radar detection, which would have come in clutch because I mean World War II was just happening, you know, casually in the background happening. Now the experiment was apparently successful because they made the US Navy destroyer escort that USS Eldridge cloaked or invisible to any enemy device. But it didn't just become invisible, apparently it transported into another dimension and reappeared in New York. That interdimensional travel resulted in tons of the crew on board dying. Now many of them were even found fused to the ship's hull because obviously our bodies don't know how to react to that kind of travel. The ones who didn't die were driven to the brink of insanity, so all in all, I don't know how much of a success it really was. According to a theory from Dr. John von Neumann, people are born with a time reference point that is directly linked to the electromagnetic fields unique to this dimension and this Earth. So when that crew drastically jumped to another time reference point, it became detrimental to their health. Ho oh, ho! None of your business, dog. At number eight, we have Cloud City. Not the place from Star Wars where a friendship died and then the entire series just kind of ignores it. Like, dude, you sold out your best friend to bounty hunters. Luke lost his hand. That is ice cold, bro. But instead, we're gonna focus on this strange phenomenon. Back on October 27th of 2015, a city in the clouds appeared out of nowhere above the city of Foshan, China. Some people thought it might have been an optical illusion, but when you take the time to look at it, it's hard to debate. Doesn't it look like a line of skyscrapers hovering in the air like Michael Jordan jumping from the three-point line? This video surfaced out of China and it looks like their city is floating in the clouds. Of course, we can Now you can say this is some sort of hoax thrown up on the internet and millions of people didn't see it. However, a few days later, another city in the clouds was seen over the Chinese city of Jiangxi. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, beings from another parallel universe are gonna come over and I hope they're super hot and love black guys. There have been people trying to explain what happened through some sort of mirage effect, but there are cloud city truthers that believe 
believe what they saw that day was another universe reaching out to ours. Maybe we're not alone. Hi guys, I'm back after Che Roundhouse kicked me. <laughs> Still pretty as ever. <laughs> now filling our number seven slot is William Cantello, or is it Hiram? Born in 1839, William Cantello was a British inventor whose newest invention at the time was a rapid firing machine gun. One day he told his sons he was going to the market to try and sell his new invention because gotta get that moolah, you know what I mean? I get you William, I get you. But mysteriously, that was the last time anyone saw William ever again. His sons hired a private investigator who theorized that maybe he moved to America, but that was proving difficult to find evidence for. Now here's where it gets weird. Now fast forward 20 years, an American inventor by the name of Hiram Maxim also invented a firing machine gun, and that wasn't the only similarity between the two. Hiram was nearly identical to William, so much so that William's own sons mistook Hiram for their dad. In his autobiography, Hiram went on about how there was definitely a man out there that was impersonating him, meaning he could have been dealing with being mistaken for William for quite a while. Now, what if Hiram Maxim was the alternate parallel version of William Cantello? The theory of parallel universes includes the fact there are parallel versions of us in the other universes, so what if the universe just glitched and Hiram and William just both ended up in the same universe? It's either that or they're doppelgangers, one or the other. Hey guys, at number six we have Black Holes. I ordered a movie titled Black Holes once, surprisingly very little science in it. It seems the movie was more about the durability of the human spirit. But the real black holes, the ones formed from stars collapsing, not empty bank accounts, those ones are still a mystery to the scientific community. We are constantly gaining information on them, but exactly what they are and what happens when something passes through them is unknown. This is because anything that is sent into them is ripped apart by the intense gravity that they create. But the brilliant mind of Stephen Hawking thought otherwise. If something is destroyed in our universe, then there will always be a trace of it. Matter can't just be evaporated into nothing. And if you trace the path of something getting sucked into a black hole, it will eventually vanish. Dr. Hawking believes this is because the mass in question isn't destroyed, but transported, possibly to another universe. So what we need to do is find someone brave enough to get shot out of a rocket into a black hole and then give us a call from the other side. It's that simple. Just make sure they're not with AT&T because they'll never get a signal. Now at number five is Gavin. Good old Gavin. We love a bit of Gavin. So this story was shared on Reddit by the user Theus underscore Eus, who said this happened when he was 16 years old. He was a bit of a self-proclaimed nerd and ended up befriending a dude named Gavin. Now they soon became BFFs, playing World of Warcraft together, going to each other's houses and chilling, etc. You know the drill. BFFs, ASAP Rocky. Now one day the user decided to go to Gavin's house uninvited, which he now retrospectively agrees was a dick move. It's okay, we all make mistakes. Either way, he knocks on the door and this 40 year old man answers. He had some grey hair but looked eerily like Gavin, so he just assumed it was his dad. But then he remembered Gavin didn't have a dad, so he was like, ah, oh, probably just a relative. He asked him if Gavin was home and the man replied saying he was Gavin. The user was confused and went on saying, no, no, I'm looking for the 16 year old Gavin and the man started looking uneasy and quickly claimed Gavin wasn't home. He told him to come back at a certain time and so the user did. This time it was his friend Gavin at the door and he told him about meeting his relative beforehand. Gavin then looked shocked before saying he didn't have a relative named Gavin and that he was home at the time he had come. So who the hell was that Gavin? Was it alternate parallel older Gavin? Does older parallel universe Gavin live in that house from like 9 to 5 and then the 16 year old Gavin takes over after? Like, like what's happening? The two boiled it down to a parallel universe glitch and that perhaps the user met the same Gavin from a different universe. At the number 4 spot we have the Hadron Collider. This is one of the most advanced machines known to man and it was built to find particles that were previously speculated, like sparticles, also known as super particles, or the Higgs boson particle found in 2012. This is a giant ring that fires particles at each other at an atomic level, causing them to smash into each other, answering the age old question, what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? Well, it might unlock proof of other universes. It's long been speculated speculated that through this machine we'll be able to find particles that are from another dimension. They will have the same properties as the particles from our dimension but be slightly off like in having more mass. If these experiments are successful in finding if these experiments are successful in their findings, this would then be the greatest scientific achievement of our time and give us hard evidence that other universes exist. 
number three, we have shadow people. Now let's discuss some smart people and what they've said in the past. Now Einstein said there are four dimensions, three of space and one of time, with the property of being able to bend light. Insert Stephen Hawking here, who said light and matter only confined to the membrane of one dimension, which then would make interdimensional travel plausible and possible. Space time can bend light, which means technically we may be able to see the shadows of people from other dimensions and they see ours. Mind blown. I honestly, I hope my shadow looks good. Hope it looks thick. I'm not trying to have space time rob me of my gains. You know what I mean? You guys know what I mean. Now, apparently, many people have seen these shadow people, including a woman who grew up in Dorchester, Massachusetts. She shared that when she was young, it was her first time sleeping in her new room, and while she was in bed, she saw this unnaturally shaped tall shadow on the wall. And that, in and of itself, isn't that weird, I know, but then the shadow stepped off the wall and glided around the room, and according to her, the shadow was wearing glasses. She saw another three shadow people near her closet and freaking out, she went to sleep with her grandparents. Tactical child escape, I like it, we all did it. Either way, she adamantly believes that night she saw dimensional travelers or shadow people who were most likely seeing her as a shadow person on the other side. And at the number two spot, we have the double slit experiments. So I'm gonna start off the top by saying this one confused the hell out of me. So if I don't explain it right, I'm sorry, just read a book about it or something. I'm going to do my best. The experiment was performed by Clinton Davidson and Lester Germer between the years of 1923 and 1927. They started the experiment by setting up two walls. They had one with a slit in it, so at the front, and the other one behind it, a solid wall. They then shot tennis balls through the slit, which created a line on the back wall where the tennis balls hit it. They then created two slits in the walls, fired tennis balls through both of those, creating two lines on the back wall. Next, they did the same thing, but firing electrons. And they expected them to act the same way as the tennis balls by making two lines. But instead, they made a series of lines, as if they were waves going through, interfering with each other. This could have been because the electrons were interacting with each other as they passed through. So they fired the electrons one by one so they couldn't interact with each other, but they still made a series of lines. When this experiment was performed with a camera set up to observe the electrons, they then started making two lines like the tennis balls did. I'm still confused about this, but from what I read, this could be happening because other universes are interfering with our own and we just don't have the technology to detect them. Another paper suggested that it could be us observing the electrons that is changing their pattern, as if we influence them with our minds. So the two options are other dimensions or psychic powers. Pretty cool. It's me, little old me, back for number one, and number one is The Lost Woman. And I don't know how I've never heard this story before based on how many top tens I've done, but better late than ever, let's face it. Now, Utsuro Bune is one of the oldest Japanese legends ever, and it deals with interdimensional entities and UFOs. In 1803, a hollow ship washed up on the shore of Hitachi province. It was made from metal and wood and had crystal windows, which was quite expensive back in the 19th century, so where the hell did they get that from? Either way, inside the ship, locals found a young, attractive woman. She had pale skin, neon red hair, and white hair extensions. Despite her being the one freaking the locals out, she was equally terrified of them as well. They took her into town and discovered she spoke a language no one could recognize, and all she kept doing was holding this bizarre box. Inside her ship, they found a tiny water supply, two sheets, and a bread pastry of some kind. There was even writing on the ship that was reproduced, but the language couldn't be recognized anywhere in the world. Baffled on what the hell to do with her, fishermen put her back on her ship, and her vessel just drifted back out to sea. And you'd think this was actually just a myth, and I'd usually agree, but this same exact woman was seen landing off of Japan's shores countless times. Like, this hoe just kept coming back for more. I know our first instinct would be to think she was an alien, but because of her very human-like appearance, many speculate that she was just a person lost in the wrong dimension. Now, the first time she was lost, but the rest of the time, she probably just came back to explore and just gloat about her hollow ship. Starting us off like we always do in at number 10, have you guys ever heard of the man from Tord? Well, this might actually be a real life time traveler. And this isn't just any time traveler. This is a time traveler who might have come from a parallel universe very similar to ours. Let me tell you guys this story. 
Back in 1954, officials at a Tokyo airport in Japan were confronted by a traveler from Europe with a passport from a country called Torrid. If you guys look on any map and search Torrid or try to search for it, well, you'll notice that it actually doesn't exist. So obviously this has to be a fake passport, right? But why would someone create a fake passport with a made up country? I mean, it's pretty silly. So officials look more into this claim. The man from apparently Torrid seemed very angry for the holdup and he was serious when he told officials where he was from. When he was asked to show on a map where this place is located, he wasn't able to exactly point to it because it wasn't labeled, but it was located around here. He circles a place called Andorra. The man stated that this is his third trip this year to Japan from his company that's located in Torrid, his country. He said Torrid has been a country for thousands of years, but officials could not find proof of this claim. The man was taken into a nearby hotel where he was closely monitored while officials figured out this man's story. Like what is going on? He did have a passport that showed Torrid on it and the strange thing is this passport actually looked like an official one. Well the next morning this man seemed to have just disappeared and there's no way out of the hotel room without being seen. He was surrounded the whole time and monitored. Also all of the paperwork the officials took in also seemed to disappear. I mean is this real life right now? Apparently this is a 100% true story. I personally don't believe it myself. I'm pretty sure there's a movie out there based on this as well, based on a true story it says. It's insane. Could this man actually be from a parallel universe? Well, that's a question we may never have answered. From there, at number nine, let's talk about the Mandela Effect. Well, this is a theory that maybe some of us have been living in an alternate universe. The Mandela Effect is when you think something is one way, but as it turns out, it's something completely different. It's like an alternate reality for some of us. For an example, take a look at this. Do you guys think it's Looney Tunes or Looney Tunes? Is it spelled T-U-N-E-S or T-O-O-N-S? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll give you guys a few moments. Go down there, let me know what you guys think, and I'm gonna reveal it right now. Well, if you guys said Looney Tunes, T-O-O-N-S, well, you might be from a parallel universe because you're wrong. But how scary is that? Like 50% of the population is wrong. Are we all from a different universe? I thought it was T-O-O-N-S. There is no way it's T-U-N-E-S. Here's another one. Is it Berenstein Bears or Berenstein Bears? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, is it Oscar Mayer or Oscar Mayer? Is it Skechers or Skechers? Well, let me know all your guys' answers in the comment section below. Number eight, let's move on to a woman from a parallel universe. I'm talking about Lorena Garcia Gordo. Well, this is her story. On the morning back in 2008, she woke up to discover that there was differences in her life. Differences that made her really wonder if she woke up in another universe. When she woke up, her sheets were a different color. Well, maybe she forgot that she changed her sheets, so uh, not a big deal here. Well, get this. When she went to her office job, a place that she's worked at for the past 20 years, years, that's when she really noticed like differences. She noticed new people and she worked for a different department. She was very confused so she actually called an ex-boyfriend she dated six months ago and she was with this person for seven years but when she called the number she discovered that it wasn't her boyfriend's phone number and the person she was looking for actually doesn't exist. And at one point she thought maybe she was drugged or had alcohol in her. She's very confused. She's not in the right state of mind due to the drugs. So she went to the doctors and tests showed that there was nothing inside of her. Lorena had all these memories that apparently never happened. She told her family she remembered a shoulder surgery that her younger sister had, but she asked her and that never happened as well. Her family thought she was going crazy. No one could figure out what was going on and how she has all these different memories that just never happened. I mean, detailed memories. Did she wake up in an alternate reality or a parallel universe? This is also something known as the Mandela Effect that I was telling you guys about. It's when you remember a lot of things differently that has happened that it actually hasn't happened. But how do you remember a younger sister having surgery and she never did? I mean, I don't think that is part of the Mandela Effect. At number seven, we have the boy who lived before. He used to say, when I was a girl, I had black hair. Or he'd say, I used to have earrings like that when I was a girl. The stay-at-home mom wondered, where was he getting these ideas? Luke's answer? changed their lives forever. Well, this is Luke, who is from Ohio, and he believes he was reincarnated. His past life was a woman named Pam. 
He said that he died in his past life and he went up to heaven and then he was reborn again to what you guys see right now, Luke. Well, kids say the darnest things, but Luke's mom was really confused. So she tested Luke in his memory of Pam and what was revealed was very scary. He said that he died in a fire in Chicago. He said he jumped out of a building. Listen to this. In March 1993, a massive fire raced through the property, trapping most residents. 19 died, including a woman in her 30s named Pamela Robinson. Pam had jumped out of a window to her death. I was really kind of weirded out by it at this point. Is this real life right now? I don't even know how I would feel after confirming Luke's story that he remembers everything about his past life. This kid is only five years old. I know they have imaginary stories, but this one went into great detail. He was continued to be tested and he was shown a bunch of images of random people. One of them was, was Pam. She was mixed in there and he was easily able to pick her out and said, she looks very familiar. And he pointed to the correct one. So Pam. Took me a couple of days to wrap my head around it. I, I couldn't sleep. I thought about it constantly. The family then looked into Pam's life to see if this is actually a real person. And she, she was. And then they started comparing her life to his life. And there was way too many similarities. So that Pam was a big like Stevie Wonder fan and Luke like really likes that era of music. She played the keyboard a lot. And one of the things that Luke, his favorite toy at the time was this little um, tiny piano that he would tote around with them. All right, number six, this one isn't a story, but it's more of a theory. So let's talk about the theory of having infinity universes. This theory actually scares a lot of people. I mean, the idea that our universe is just so minuscule in comparison to the infinite amount of universes. There's an idea that at any moment, our universe could just be erased like an instance. It's almost like just imagine the real life Thanos snap and then boom, everyone on earth became the victim. There's actually a phobia called aperiophobia. This is a fear of infinity or even the fear of living forever. Would you guys be afraid if you can live forever? Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on that. Uh, for me, I'm not sure how it would feel. I mean, everyone around you would just be moving on to the afterlife and you're just kind of here on earth. Stephen Hawking believed we can live in multi-universes and it was actually his last paper he wrote before he passed away. So is this idea really that crazy? Well, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Number five, we have Godness Allison. She's a YouTuber who has claimed she indeed traveled through time. She went through another timeline. Hello everyone, Goddess Allison here and today I'm going to be talking to you about parallel timelines or parallel universes. And the reason for this is because I visited a parallel timeline. She was taken into another world and this took place in 2016 in October. She was taken early in the morning between 3.30 a.m. to about 6.30 in the morning. Well, Goddess spent three days in an alternate universe where she stayed in a hospital for three days. I think this parallel universe is called the Psychiatric Center. Well, this is a really scary story because people do believe that they have traveled into another universe. And wait till you guys hear about the kid who can actually prove that he lived in another time frame as another person. He's coming up at number one, so make sure you stay tuned. Well, going back to Goddess for a moment, while watching her video, it's very confusing. I don't know anything she's, I don't know anything she's talking about because I'm not that smart of a person, but to me, it kind of sounds like she might be making some things up. I think after having this experience, I think that we all live in one same universe that operates on the same laws of physics and quantum physics, on the same laws of perhaps geometric fractal that of the plutonic solids that fit inside each other. Okay, my brain kind of hurts with all of that uh, information, so let, let's move on. Number four. What I'm about to tell you is something that I haven't even told my children, nor my grandchildren. My own wife doesn't even know what I'm about to tell you. So this is Alexandra Smith who claims that he has traveled to the year 2118. That's about 99 years into the future. That is absolutely insane, but kind of cool. I would have so many questions for this guy, like did Elon Musk actually make it to Mars? Did we become cyborgs? Is YouTube still around? Is top 10 channel still around? Well, this guy's pretty lucky to have the opportunity to know what the future unfolds. We didn't know if it would work. 
sat me in a small room and we had many meetings. I had meetings with various scientists telling me what to expect, telling me what to do during the process of the actual time traveling itself. This guy actually believes that the government and secret scientists, like the secret society, actually sent him to the future. Number three, I really don't believe that time travel is real, but then again, there's been events in history and even stories that people have told that might show small signs that traveling to another universe or time traveling might actually be plausible. Have you guys ever seen this picture right here? Well, it's a black and white picture, but if you guys look right over here, you guys will notice that this woman is holding something. Well, that something is a cell phone. Well, let me put this into perspective for you guys. This picture was taken in 1938. Cell phones were invented by Martin Cooper in 1973. He was only 10 years old in 1938, so how was this picture even taken? Well, how does that woman have that cell phone? Phones weren't even thought of. There are many conspiracy theories and scary stories that surround this woman, and why or how she has a cell phone. It doesn't make sense. No one even knows who this woman is. This is a very interesting picture that is just simply unexplained. Maybe she's a time traveler, and Alexander Smith might have actually traveled to the year 2118. Number two, we have Paul Dynek, who is a Swiss language teacher who went into a coma from 1921 to 1922. When he came out of his coma, he shared a fascinating story with the world. Well, he didn't directly share it, let me explain. When he came out of his coma, he said that he traveled to the year 3906 AD as a man named Andrew Northman, who was a famous physician. When he woke up, he acquired a great understanding of physics, and he went on to write down his experience in a book he published titled Valley of the Roses. He talked about what the future was like, Earth was able to colonize Mars in about 200 years, but there was a tragedy to the 20 million people living on Mars. So I guess that kind of answers the question we had before, did Elon Musk reach Mars, I guess it's a no. And if everyone dies on Mars, maybe we should try and colonize somewhere else. The scary part about this whole thing is the fact that Paul's journal entry, which was very detailed, he actually didn't want anyone to read them or even know about them. It was only when he gave his journals to his students they released it to the public, and that's when Paul's story was known. Can this story be real? I guess we're gonna have to wait 200 years to find out if this man was right. Finally, number one, we have yet another boy, Cameron, who has memories of a past life. Now, this gets crazy. And he's also five years old, which is actually the same age as the boy Luke we talked about on this list at number seven. Well, since Cameron was able to talk, he started talking about a past life, a life that took place 220 miles away from where he lives. I lived in the White House with my mom and dad uh, and my three brothers and sisters. The big problem with that story is that Cameron only has one brother, so who is he talking about? As Cameron got older, his story remained the same. It only got more detailed. He remembers his former parents' name. Many doctors and experts have actually taken interest in this fascinating story. Psychologists has even met with them. They met with Cameron and the family to find out if the story is real or maybe it's just all made up. Really interesting. Basically, how Cameron describes his world really seems to me quite different from how children with imaginary friends and imaginary worlds describe their experiences. Cameron, as he got older, kept asking his mom if they can visit where he used to live, and the family, over time, just said, yeah, let's go. Well, they traveled 220 miles away to the small town to see what would happen, to see if what he's saying actually exists. The mother thought maybe this would convince Cameron that this is just a fantasy in his head, and this past life, yeah, it never happened. Well, he remembered everything. They actually found the house that he described in much detail. If you guys want to see the full documentary, it's really fascinating to me, it's really interesting to me. Well, it's called The Boy Who Lived Before. Check it out on YouTube, it's really good. Mm -hmm.